Okay, now that we understand parasite and induced drag, let's take a look at how they interact together. And we're gonna do this on a, uh, on a drag curve. And we're gonna draw this out. The vertical axis here represents total drag. It represents drag. The horizontal axis represents velocity. We could just call it speed, but velocity. All right, now, as soon as we, as soon as we take off in an airplane, as soon as we start rolling down the runway in an airplane, we start seeing resistance of airflow. Just like if we were driving in a car and we put our hand out the window, we're gonna start feeling that air five knots, 10, 15, 20, it's gonna get faster. As we get faster and faster, we're gonna feel more of the air against our hand. The airplane feels more of the air against its wings and leading edge of the airplane. And that is the making of parasite drag. So parasite drag, although this isn't gonna be exacting as to how it may be in the pod's handbook of aeronautical knowledge, parasite drag increases parabolically with speed. So as we go faster, parasite drag increases. Induced drag doesn't take hold or begin until we have started lift, the production of lift. So we typically don't see induced drag until we've got faster than the stall speed with gear and flaps out. So therefore, we don't start drawing this, typically the induced drag side of it, until we have rotated and get positive, positive lift out of our wing. So now, induced drag gets less and less as the angle of attack decreases. So let's take a look at this real quick. Let's review where we're at already. So parasite drag, faster I go, the more the parasite drag. All right, we see that. The faster I go, the less the induced drag because the angle of attack is lowering. The faster I go, lower angle of attack, less induced drag. Okay. The point where these cross is a kind of a special place that would be your best lift to drag ratio. So the least drag would be right here. The least amount of drag that you could have. So this, this is where we establish a best glide speed because if I lost an engine and I would glide at a faster speed, say I'm gliding at this speed right here, I would have more parasite drag. And if I was to glide at this speed here, I would have more induced drag. But what we do to better see that is we draw a total drag curve. So we'll see how we can do it, how well I can draw this here, drawing freehand on this. We've got a, a total drag curve, which is these curves added up. And it's going to look something like this, not exacting. But it's enough that you can see and get the point here. There's drag total. And of course, down here is induced drag. So right here at this spot is the least amount of drag. So let's say we wanted to go faster. Let's say right now we're flying along at, uh, oh, at some speed, we'll call it 73 knots. That speed oftentimes is the, is the speed that um, for Diamond Star and Diamond Eclipse is that's their best that's their best glide speed. So if we wanted to go faster than 73 knots, faster and faster we go, it's pretty obvious we would need more power. We know to go faster, we need more power. So let's say that we decide to go this speed here, and we run that all the way up to the total drag curve. We need enough power to overcome that much drag. But what is not intuitive is to slow down, I still need more power. That's not very intuitive to people. Um, 
A lot of times people will, will say, well, if I want to go slower, I pull my power. Well, sure you do. Just for a moment, you can do it that way. But then your angle of attack has to increase for the compensated loss in speed. It's a constant balance between angle of attack and, and speed. So as I slow down, I'm at a higher angle of attack and I'm going to need more power. So you might need the same amount of power to go at, say, 90 knots as you need to, say, go at 45 knots. It's just a matter of where you're at on that total drag curve. Now, in the middle of this right here, this line here, is, again, our, our best lift-to-drag ratio. And this right here is what we commonly refer to in this area, the front side of the power curve. This is the front side, or the region of normal command. Front side, region of normal command. Over here, we call this the back side of the power curve. And this, this back side of the power curve is, is what we refer to oftentimes as the region of reverse command. So if I'm flying at if I'm flying long right here at, oh, we'll call it 80 knots airspeed, if I want to go faster to this speed, I simply add more power. But if I'm going slower and I want to fly, say, this speed here, this speed right here, I still have to add power. What happens is I probably pull power to slow down then my angle of attack keeps coming up, coming up, coming up. It's a higher angle of attack than it was at best L over D, and now I need more power. So the summary here is best lift over drag is the spot where the parasite and the induced drag curves cross, and it's the lowest point of total drag. That's how we get to best glide. And I'm on the back side of the power curve, also known as the region of reverse command, if I'm going, say, this speed here, if I'm going, say, this, this speed, yeah, right here, I want to speed up, well, I've got to get rid of induced drag. So I do that with my stick. So my control stick, or my yoke, is what controls speed on the back side of the power curve because what we're really doing is controlling induced drag. So if I want to slow down, I pull back on the stick or the yoke, and I increase the induced drag. If I want to speed up, I release pressure or push forward slightly so I can reduce induced drag. And if I'm on the other side of the power curve, on the front side of the power curve, if I want to speed up, I add power. And if I want to slow down, I pull power. So typically, downwind and base, I'm still on the front side of the power curve. But once I get on final, now I'm starting to slow down to that best glide range, maybe starting to get below it, and that's where the back side of the power curve happens. So it happens during, during uh, final and most airplane, short field landings on pretty much all airplanes, and then on slow flight. So that's a summary of parasite drag, induced drag, how they're relative to each other, above best glide speed, Total drag goes up, and below best glide speed, total drag goes up. And that's how we fly the airplane on the back side of the power curve, is by using the, uh, the stick or the yoke to control airspeed and power for altitude. Hope this helps. Have a great day.